Hello and welcome to the video. This video is about two new cameras from Foxia. Now this is the Toothless 2 and the Toothless 2 Nano. Very new cameras and I was lucky enough to get a couple in to have a play with. Now sadly I can't go out and uh, do as the, all the testing that I normally would. Everything's had to be done in the back garden because going out and testing cameras I don't think is considered essential travel under the current guidelines with coronavirus. However, it has thrown up a couple of things. So in this video, what I'd like to do is to go through the specs and then show you how these things perform, not only in daylight, uh, but also in dusk dark conditions um, because they have quite a high sensitivity to low light conditions. So let me unbox both of these and run through the specs and show you what comes in the box because these are basically the same camera in a slightly different form factor, but basically the same specs. The performance is a little bit different because the lenses are slightly different and the connections on the back are as well. So this one is the Foxeer Micro Toothless 2, um, angle switchable FPV, it's called a Starlight camera, uh, super sensor, high dynamic range. Uh, they have the manual inside, which is the same manual it appears for both. I'll show you in the menu on the smaller camera in a minute what the uh, different fields of view look like. So you get a bag of bits with this that includes the joystick and all the mounting hardware and the cable as well. Now the cable itself uh, plugs into the back of the camera, surprise, surprise, but the other end has um, a connector that looks like it's designed to go onto a flight controller. Uh, and then the, you have the other pins for the on-screen display. And you need to use that to access the OSD because the OSD has like a common ground with the ground pin on the back because we have a vSense pin on the back here and we have an OSD pin. So this looks like it's more designed for flight controllers, uh, probably specific flight controllers in mind. 1200 TVL lines, 4, 3 and 16, 9 switchable, PAL, NTSC switchable, very sensitive. Uh, looking at the specs, it's saying it's a 0 0.0001 lux. M12 1.7 millimeter lens, 4.3 wide, 4.3 narrow, and 69 are the three modes. I'll uh, put a little image up here with what the field of view are for each of those. Low light sensitivity of 0 0.0001 lux, which is about 10 times more than most of the cameras that I tend to play with here. Power requirement is 4.6 to 20 volts. So I would normally run something like this on five, eight or nine volts as part of build and 19 by 19 millimeter dimensions. Next one to look at then is the Nano Toothless 2 Starlight FPV camera, again with the same low light sensitivity, available in a couple of different colours this time, black and fluorescent green, as you'll see in a moment I've got the fluorescent green one here. Again lots of different modes for the way that you fly, so cloudy, sunny, sunset, indoor, uh, dark night settings, half inch CMOS sensor again, camera control just like its bigger brother, and this time you've also got the ability to plug in an on-screen display. 4369 switchable, PAL NTSC switchable, 1200 TVL lines, and the field of view, depending on which lens you have, is slightly different. Now I've got the Starlight version here, which is going to give me a slightly narrower field of view in both 43 and 169 settings. In the bag with the bits, you get the adapter to take it up to the next size of camera, and then you get the joystick, which is great, and some of the mounting hardware. Lens looks a little bit different, a little bit smaller. Again, this is the Starlight version here, and on the back, you have everything all marked up. So let me just plug the camera in and show you with the one that's easy to set the on-screen display up in. Uh, the on-screen display appears to be the same on both of them. So let me run through it here on the Foxeer Toothless 2 Nano Starlight version camera. Now by default at the bottom, you're going to have the name of the camera, you're going to have the voltage that it can see, and you're also going to have the timer. But you've got the automatic exposure settings, white balance, day-night setup, how the image is displayed, the video settings. So let me just replace the lens cover on it so you can see the menu. So we've got the automatic exposure. You can set the brightness you want, how it picks that up, shutter control, gain control. We have uh, things like the white balance setting. So you can have that automatic white balance or manual white balance. 
You can have how it handles day and night transitions, auto color, black and white. And then we're going to have the image enhance, so the sharpness, the color gain, the how the noise reduction works. I'm going to leave everything on auto for the video demos. Then all the video settings, whether it's PAL, NTSC, how the wide dynamic range is working. And then the special settings is where you can actually change the view from the camera between the 243 settings and the 169. So let me take off the lens and we'll run through each of those. Unfortunately, it does reboot the camera every time you change the settings. So rather than being dynamic, you have to kind of uh, go through each of the settings in turn. So as you cycle through each of the settings, you can actually see how the field of view changes in terms of how the camera is handling the exposure and light and everything else. It's doing a really nice job sat indoors near an open window. But hopefully by scrolling through each of the 4.3 standard and uh, wide and also the 16.9, you can see the difference in the way that it looks. So let me show you some footage. Uh, apologies for little bits of interference on this. I'm having to keep the video transmitter relatively close to myself. I'm actually in my own back garden on a sunny afternoon. And let me just walk around and show you. Now this is the Nano, first of all. This is the small green camera. Uh, beautiful, bright, sunny day, but you can see easily in the shadowy parts uh, where the hedges on the left, how that's all working. And the sky is nicely exposed. It's nice and blue. Uh, you're getting a little bit of fisheye. There is my Spitfire wind vane in the sky. And even if I have the sun directly in the frame, then we're not losing lots of detail in the shadows. The dynamic range, the color saturation is actually pretty faithful to what it looks like on the day. So if I walk through onto the side of the canal, and uh, then point it towards the bright sky. We've also got the light reflected off the canal. Again, you can see what a beautiful job it does of capturing everything. So the Nano, from the testing that I've done here in the daytime, is producing a really, really beautiful, naturally co colored image. The color, potentially, I would turn down just a smidgen, but, uh, and there's a little bit of redness in some of the shadows, but that is great. If we compare that with the Toothless 2 micro camera, the white one, then, and again, apologies for the little bit of interference in the image. Uh, the video transmitter, even though it's only 25 milliwatts, is a little bit close. But if you can see through that, hopefully you can see that in my humble opinion, I think this is actually an even nicer image. Uh, clarity is very good, sharpness is great. Uh, the color balance, I think, is actually even better. Really, really wide dynamic range. So even with the sun in the frame, uh, I'm not losing all of the detail. We can still see the pot in the shadow by the side of the flamingo. And there again is my Spitfire wind vane. That looks absolutely fantastic beautiful image working really well but these are low light cameras so let's take them out into the same back garden well after sunset now this is probably about an hour after the sun has gone down it's very difficult to see things by eye but this is still the same micro camera and hopefully you can see here again apologies for the little bits of interference on the screen i'm having to hold the uh, video transmitter a little bit close but hopefully that's slightly better now i i tried it on two settings one was a low voltage which you saw initially and now we're looking at it running from the battery voltage so this is on a 3s pack now by i i'm having to kind of uh, walk very carefully here but the camera is picking up everything absolutely beautifully. It's remaining in color. We can see detail in the sky. We can see the details in the canal. Everything is working really well. Really impressive performance from this camera at nighttime. It shows how sensitive this camera actually is and how well it performs in these lower light conditions. However, the micro camera was a little bit different. Now, I struggled with this. I tried it with both a five volt supply and a main battery supply as well. Now, if it's set to color, and again, excuse the slight uh, problems 
with the image, uh, it's still performing very well. Not as good in my humble opinion, but then I guess the lens is a little bit smaller. But if you can see through some of that breakup, you can see that we can, even in these really, really dark conditions. And again, this is what an well after an hour at sunset where the garden is very difficult to see anything at all you can still see some stuff uh, the problem that i've got with it is that if i put it into automatic or force it into black and white mode we get these really weird kind of old school doctor who crt things whereas in color it performs an awful lot better so in summary what do i think well both these cameras give a beautiful image in better conditions where we have more light they work fantastically well great image great color quality really wide dynamic range so these are ones that i'm definitely going to consider in future builds both of them have uh, the half inch cmos sensor both of them have a wide voltage range and 1200 tvl lines be aware though that the toothless 2 nano has a different lens but also supports a slightly lower voltage. It'll probably make it much more useful for things like toothpick builds. Only the Micro has the vSense pin at the back, so if you want to put a camera in a model without a flight controller and monitor the battery voltage, that's going to be the one for you. Speaking to Foxia about the weirdness with the Nano Starlight camera, their reply was that they haven't had that in their testing and I may have got a faulty one. However, they haven't sent me another one to test, so all I can do is show you the results of what I've got here. But the reaction that I've got, and looking at a couple of other reviews, I think that might actually be the case with my Nano. In low light conditions, it might not be very happy. But I would always recommend from my experiences here is make the cameras stay in color mode if they think they go into a low light condition and that will preserve the image. So again, two very nice cameras from Foxia and that extra low light sensitivity with a bigger sensor does mean that you can fly in dusk and even early nighttime conditions and still be able to see where you're going. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.